and uh, time controller? <laughs> oh, man. We're, we're in trouble here, you know. What kind of friend of life in the spirit are you? <laughs> And I noticed no cards or nothing. Okay. <clears throat> so we're rolling here, I guess. And um, um, I want to begin this 20-minute this episode tonight <clears throat> with just a personal story. Uh, and then I'd like to address some of the truth in relationship to it. Uh, it relates to Albert. I think many of you know Albert, but not everybody does. But Albert passed away some years ago. He's a very special brother in Holland. Um, and I won't tell you the whole story of how we got connected with them, but um, they were there in Holland. And to be honest with you, the fellowship there was a bit legalistic, mainly due to Albert, honestly. <clears throat> but as we came, the Lord moved, and, and he and I became close friends. And then after, I don't know, 10 years or, or a certain period of time, he developed Parkinson's. And, um, <clears throat> and it got worse and worse, and it even started affecting his memory. And so one of the trips that I was there, it had gotten really, really bad. And we were sitting in the same chairs in his living room that we had sat for many, many trips that I'd made to Holland. <clears throat> and no one was in the room. And he said, Randy, I need you to, to pray something for me. I said, sure, I'll, whatever. Whatever's on your heart. <clears throat> and, and he teared up. And he said, this disease is making me where I can't remember the word, the scripture, and the things that the Lord has shared with me. It's affected my mind where I can't remember. And then he just broke down and started crying because, you know, he loves Jesus. And um, he said, you can't imagine how horrible this is because, you know, your whole life is involved with the Lord like his was. And um, so I prayed for him, and I, um, I've never forgot that. And we still may, were able to make some trips there before he passed. Uh, and I would always share this scripture with him, and I would always share Jesus with him. I would always talk about the Lord, and he would come alive because his core was that, but he just couldn't uh, maintain all of that. <clears throat> and um, I, I want to kind of go over some scriptures that I did in a blog a couple of weeks ago but I'm going to give it a different angle. And the blog that I did a couple of weeks ago was really about Jesus' heart, and I think the name of it was something like how to give Jesus rest or something like that, something like that. Uh, I want to use the same scriptures, but now I want to talk about our heart. Um, so if you will, turn with me to Luke chapter 21. And verse 37. Luke 21, verse 37. And in the daytime, this talking about Jesus, and in the daytime he was teaching in the temple. And at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the, uh, in the temple for to hear him. And in the blog, I'm not going to repeat the blog, but in the blog, we really emphasize the fact that <clears throat> if you'll notice in this scripture, in the daytime, he's in the temple and he's teaching. He's, and here's the key word now, he's teaching. He's teaching. And um, 
So there are people, and the people have come to the temple, and they've come to hear the word of God from Jesus. Okay? And then, and then at night, it says he went out and abode, abode in the Mount of Olives. Um, and it doesn't say his disciples went with him, and it doesn't say he went there to pray. And so the, this goes along with what I shared in the blog. The fact that they went all to their homes, and he was left, and nobody said, hey, you know, you want to come abide with me? You want to come be with me? <clears throat> they were just, they just getting the teaching, but they had no thought for him. And then verse 38, and all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple, not to the Mount of Olives, not to where he had been, not to where he had spent the night, but where they left him. But where they left him. In the temple, Lord, teach us. Teach us. Teach us more. Teach us more. So I have on the board a little chart with a Bible and with the cross. And the, the Bible, of course, represents the Word of God, and the cross represents the Lord himself. And um, in this, uh, these just two simple verses, I mean, not counting what was shared on the blog, now looking at our hearts and looking at our, how, we, how we choose to relate to the Lord. And um, in this situation, there was a real hunger for the Lord. There was a real desire for the word. There was, that was paramount, and that's what they were coming for. But, but listen carefully, they were coming for his teaching and then left him after they got filled and got what they wanted. And then the next morning, they go, oh, we need Jesus, we need Jesus, we want the Lord. So they come back, not to where he spent the night, where he abode, it says, but to the place of teaching. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, we want, we want you. Teach us. And these scriptures are very simple. They just drop down at the end of chapter 21 of Luke, and they are, most people could read right over them. But there is this truth, and, and we've preached it a lot here, and I was a graduate of Berean Bible School, and Berean was huge on, on searching the scriptures and the importance of that, and I, I don't back off of that one bit because it is necessary to search the scriptures. It's necessary to see Jesus in the word, but that's not the end. That's just, that's on the road to something, okay? And so um, there can be developed a uh, sort of a, gosh, really a lifestyle. I mean, you know, that's a, you get in a habit of, going to church, even maybe at home, getting into the word and stuff like that, but never really coming to Jesus, never really seeing Jesus. And, you know, I mean, he's teaching, and this is a really great example right here. He's teaching. He's right in front of them, and they're getting the teaching, but they never see him, as it were, as they leave, and he's left there. Their, their mind is not on him. Their mind is on him as presented in the scripture. And again, I have no problem with that except as that becomes something that forms us outside of our hearts being after the Lord, of our desire saying, you know, I'm not just wanting to see you in the scriptures. And, and here's why I'm bringing this up. Albert, like many of us, spent his life searching the scriptures. And he did know the Lord in the scriptures. But when his mind went, when his mind went, he couldn't reach Jesus. And I'm not, this isn't being critical at all. I love Albert and, you know, but there, we have to know Jesus on a greater basis than just what we know from the scriptures. 
others. Does that make sense? I mean, there has, there has to be, like in his case, or then at the end of our life or when, when this crisis happens or whatever, we can't, you see, with the scriptures, you have to call them up. You have to call them up. And I know for a fact that sometimes the darkness that we go through is just like Alzheimer's in that we go through some situation and we can't call up the scriptures. We can't call up Jesus. We can't call up the answer. We can't call up, you know, do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, you know, you get in that place and it's like, you know, I, I you know, where are you, Lord? But it's, it's like before the crisis, we're standing over here in light, seeing him in the scriptures, and then we step over here in darkness, and the very Jesus that we were just, in some cases, just knowing, it's kind of like, now how did that go, oh Lord? And there's a little panic that goes with it, because I, where's Jesus, and, and I, I want to I wanna get hold of Jesus, and you know, I just want to tell you something, that, that getting hold of Jesus is not the goal. He's got you. You're one with him. You know, the day Satan gets on the throne and cuts off his toe and you're that toe, that's the day you can start worrying. Do you see that? I mean, you think Satan's going to get in the throne room? I'm going to sneak in there and I'm going to assassinate Jesus. Or, you know, and if, at best, if I can just cut off a finger or something like that. It ain't going to happen, folks. It ain't going to happen. You're one with him, but you got to know that one, not just him from the scriptures, because much of the time we're trying to retain all that in our mind. And I'm going to tell you something. I've been searching the scriptures since I was 22 years old. 22. <laughs> and I mean big time searching the scriptures. Uh, I, I would... I would bet that many of you that I search the scriptures more than like several of you together. Uh, I'm not going to put Kelly in that category because she cheats. But, <laughs> well, you know, she gets the opportunity. I still have texts and cell phones and people calling me away. But, it, but I've done that for since I was 22 years old and, and loved the Lord and loved the Holy Spirit. And, but, but if I had not at a certain juncture moved past that being what my life is, I would not have anything in darkness. How many of you think that I ever have to go through bad trials or darkness? I'm sure most of you don't think about that very much in a, in a certain sense, but I do. I do. And um, when I do, when I, for example, I gave the example of, of stepping from light to dark. When I step into darkness and I can't call it up, I don't freak out. I don't freak out if I can't call up the scripture in relationship to that. I, it doesn't affect me at all. You want to know why? Because I'm one with Jesus. By his death and burial and resurrection, I'm one with him. And But here's the key, see. You can't in the darkness go, I'm one with Jesus by his, the doctrine of death, burial, and resurrection. Because it really doesn't work. It doesn't. You go, kick it, Lord, kick it in me. Make it real, you know. Because I'm, I'm confessing it. Okay, you're going to have to get past confessing it. You're going to have to get pl to the place of knowing him. And they didn't. They knew him from the scriptures. They knew him from this area and they knew him from that area. But they did not know him from um, uh, who it was and see him in these circumstances. For example, this circumstance right here. This circumstance is one where he is there, apparently day after day, pouring himself out, giving himself. And you know, this almost makes it sound like he's there from the morning when they get up and show up till night when they go to bed. 
I mean, does it kind of seem like that? And, and, and so, you know, he doesn't come back the next day and go, you people are the worst. I had to sleep out there in that garden. Do you know how many mosquitoes are there in the Mount of Olives? Do you know how, you know, do you know how rough it is sleeping on the ground by myself? You know, I met a raccoon and he nuzzled up for a little while, but he left. You know, y'all are horrible. And I would say to Jesus, are you from Texas? You just said y'all. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but the but he never said anything like that. He didn't mention it. He won't mention it. He won't mention it. He won't bring it up. Because why? Because our hearts have to find him. Our hearts have to find him. You know? And when your heart finds him, you think of him outside of religious temple teaching. Right? you know, religious temple teaching, you know. And, you know, if, if you've never gotten this in all the years I've been teaching, I put no confidence in my ability to teach or my sincerity or anything. My confidence for you is that the Holy Spirit's going to reveal Christ. That's my desire and my confidence. And I don't, I, I probably think less of my teaching than you do, some of you. <laughs> some of you. Not my wife, but anyway, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Did you see the look she gave me? I married her for her looks, but not that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is uh, this, this is fast. <laughs> We've only got five minutes left. Huh? All right. Um, well, I'm I'm not going to move off of this scripture then for right now. There is this um, there is this awakening to the one, not to the message. This can be message. The word, the scriptures can just be message. This is spirit and life. This is Jesus. This is him. This is the way he is. And, you know, if you, you know, this is just a fact. If you love somebody, you notice their ways, right? If you fall in love with somebody, you notice all kind of stuff other people don't notice, right? Some of you act like you had never been in love. <laughs> Shouldn't have gotten married then. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm just joking. Well, God is love. He's not holiness. He, he is holy, but he's not holiness. He's not all of the things that we, you know, talk about God. He's omniscient, but that's not who he is. That, that's a trait that he has omnipotent, all of those things, but he is love, and he notices. He notices. And when the Holy Spirit sheds abroad in our hearts the love of God, we notice stuff. You don't have to try. You don't have to work it up. You don't have to, you know, uh, and in fact, and I've said this one before, and it always, it's, it's, I mean, I, this came from me saying this one time. You know, okay, God, you are love, so help me love you more. I think, this is just my opinion, I think that's a, one of the worst things you can say to somebody that you claim to love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Help me love you more. And going, jeez, if you ain't got it, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> you know? Not everybody's like me with my responses. But, but, I said that to the Lord, and then it got real quiet. <laughs> it did. It got real quiet. I thought about it, and I went, I want to take that back, Jesus. Oh. 
that's something that I have to see. If he just does it, then it's just him doing it, giving his own love and getting it back. You know, in that sense, you understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> there, there's meant to be a response from us. But, but in this situation, Jesus is right there and we're not noticing him. We're not even noticing the hymn of it, we're noticing the wonderful words of life. We're noticing the beautiful way or the way that he opens those scriptures. And you go, man, never a man spoke like this man. Or we're sitting at home and we go, this is just the best. What he just showed me. And I can't wait to share it in church because everybody will think I'm so spiritual. Anybody ever done that before? Me too. <laughs> Me too. So we're, so we're not even really noticing him in the word. We're noticing us. This is, this is really good. And, you know, people are going to be impressed. And they're going to go, wow, that was really good. You must be somebody special. Yeah, special ed. Because of our attitudes because of our lack of, of awareness of the Lord, uh, awareness of, and, and again, you're not going to get that just by staring at his face while he's teaching and going, you're what it's all about. And, you know, I just, you know, you're going to see it in his heart movements. Do you understand that word? Heart movements. Heart movement. There are things that he does that identify him. Things that he does. And you can see that in the scriptures. You, you can, I mean, you can see that in the scriptures. And you can see that in the way that he deals with you. And if you were one of those people that were here at that day, you could see it in him coming constantly, all day, sharing, disappearing, and going, when you get home and you're comfortable, huh? Wonder where Jesus went. I, I'm sure somebody took care of him and then he shows back up and he doesn't say anything these these are attributes that are not common to us they are not common we by fallen nature are selfish and everything has to play some way into my life and that's why the word self-forgetting is so fantastic because if you if you do something in self-forgetfulness, here's how you'll know it. Later on, you'll go, wow, I didn't even think about it. I wasn't a piece in that. Because, you know, we have mixed motives. And we have many reasons. You know, say, well, I just did this. Well, there's probably five different reasons why you did it. And one of them is probably you, if not, if not four or five. But, but self-forgetfulness is greater than unselfishness it's the same thing but self-forgetfulness means you have gotten to the place where it's not even a little bit about you it's about him and I am in this for him but it's coming now automatically amen okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray a quick prayer and then we'll take a little break father thank you for your word and your son but may he become more to us than just a great teacher more to us than just a great subject from the bible may our hearts now may our hearts push past just knowing him in the scriptures though we will do that push past to find you there uh, as the one that we are one with as the one that is our life, as the one that can live and move and have his being in us as we have it in him. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's take a little break and we'll come back for a